Welcome to the Great Show of Greyhounds. My name is Brian. Unfortunately, it's going to be a little stormy during this episode. And something tells me that Olive is not going to be okay with this. Let's go inside, Olive. Eliminating a dog's fear of thunder is something that is very difficult to do and not something that Heather and I have been very successful with. So instead, in this episode, I'm going to share with you coping techniques that we use with Olive to try to reduce her anxiety. Once Olive hears thunder, she looks for a safe place to hide out in during the storm. Some kind of den. During this time, she is an absolute mess and is completely inconsolable. There is a line of thinking that you should not even try to comfort them during these times, as they may perceive your efforts as reward for displaying fearful behavior. I do not subscribe to this line of thinking, as it is my observation that Olive is too emotional to even process that sort of cause and effect. In fact, she is so emotional that she doesn't even acknowledge our existence, and our efforts to comfort her really go unnoticed, so we usually just leave her be. One thing we always make sure to do is to put her into her thunder shirt, which does look a lot more complicated than it actually is. To put it on, I start off by slipping the thunder shirt's adjustable collar over her head. I then tightly wrap it around her chest and velcro it down so it doesn't come loose. The purpose here is to swaddle the dog. The tight squeeze provided by the shirt can help calm her down. Now I leave her alone to find a place to hide in. Can you find Olive? She's in this room. Olive started using this corner as a regular hideout, so we found a bed that fits in it perfectly. She has a few more hideouts around the house that we move beds into when it storms. She likes the corner by the front door. She has a corner in the kitchen and a corner by the downstairs bathroom. Anywhere in the basement is good. And she also likes both of the bathrooms upstairs, which is actually really odd to me because the ventilation in there actually amplifies the sounds of the storm. It can be really difficult to sleep at night when Olive cannot decide which of these two bathrooms to settle down in. We have found that she responds well to a baby gate confining her to the bathroom at night. She will at least feel safe enough to go to sleep. Disclaimer, confinement may or may not be a good idea for a frightened dog. This works really well for Olive because she's had several litters of puppies in comfortable dens, and I think this is a familiar environment for her. Now another dog may freak out and hurt themselves trying to escape. You know your dog and will have to make Make that decision for yourself if kenneling them during a storm is a good idea or not. I do not think that there is any shame in speaking to your vet about medication. We have Olive on Prozac because she was to the point that she was stressing about storms that weren't even happening. This was a quality of life issue for us. Olive wasn't even eating because she was stressing every day. If you're not digging the idea of prescription medications, then I completely understand. In that case, perhaps you'd like to know about some non-prescription options. Both Benadryl and Melatonin work to make your dog drowsy, but neither of them will function if your dog is already anxious. So we only bother to do this if the storm has not yet arrived. Olive gets an upset stomach if we don't accompany the Benadryl with a little bit of food. I don't know if that's just her or if that affects all dogs, so that's something to keep in mind. If you want to avoid medication altogether, then I would recommend lavender-scented essential oils. Young Living, Deuterra, Eden's Garden are just a few of many brands who offer it in several different forms. With this little bottle, I can apply a drop or two to Olive's collar so that it wafts into the air around her. I I do not want to apply this anywhere to her face because that's just going to be way too intense on her nose. I can also put this into a diffuser so that it can cycle it through the air into the room. It can also come in a spray bottle where I can apply it to her bed so that she can smell it when she lays down. Something else that may be worth trying is playing an audio recording of a storm at a low volume. Once your dog is used to it, you can slightly increase the volume the next time. You can also engage your dog in a fun activity at the same time so they aren't just focused on the sounds. All of these activities, <laughs> or none of these activities, can help your dog cope with the anxieties that come with a thunderstorm. It all depends on how easily they can be distracted. I find it very important how I conduct myself during a storm. Greyhounds are very empathetic and in tune to how you feel, and frequently they're is based on yours. When there's a loud crack of thunder and Olive cowers, I say something to her like, wow, that was a big noise. I do my best to display confidence around her. Even if we're in the basement for a tornado warning, I do my best not to betray any fear to Olive. 
this episode's photo finish, I have a picture of Olive here in this safe spot, and I encourage all of you to post pictures of your dogs in their safe places. I also invite all of you to type up in the comments any advice that you have for your dogs during storms. In the next episode of The Great Show, we're going to learn about what your Greyhound's ear tattoos are all about, and how you can use that information to look up the racing statistics. A link to that episode, as well as the previous, can be found over there. Down below, you can find a link to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also find us on social media at Great Show. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.